Hello everyone and welcome to re-entry. In this tutorial I'm going to go through uh, some of the basic procedures related to the lunar orbit injection. Uh, I'm currently on my way to the moon uh, and I'm on a trajectory uh, that should hit uh, the closest point of the moon at about 60 nautical miles of altitude. Uh, but I'm not in an orbit. I will uh, basically return back to Earth. So this is my current location and I'm about to head towards this closest point to the moon here and then it will start raising the altitude and return back. Uh, so the entire principle behind the lunar orbit injection or LOI is to uh, perform a burn that will basically uh, reduce the velocity of the spacecraft relative to the moon uh, to bring it into an elliptical orbit around the moon. So if we take a look at kind of a typical uh, Apollo lunar landing mission, mission profile, uh, what typically happens is that uh, you will first do the launch and the ascent into an insertion orbit uh, around Earth. So then you will be orbiting Earth until you're doing the translunar injection or TLI which will put you on a trajectory towards the moon and if you don't do anything you will basically slingshot around the moon and then return back to earth or in some kind of uh, uh, orbit. Uh, the LOI will be performed um, on the far side of the moon uh, and will break the air, uh, spacecraft so that it enters lunar orbit. What this uh, typically does is that the first burn will insert you in a quite a, a eccentric orbit. So uh, you will first be in orbit around the moon that has PE at around 60 nautical miles and then AP probably at around 170 nautical miles. This is up to you and how you plan the burn, but this was uh, uh, what the real astronauts uh, uh, did. Uh, then, once you return back to PE, which is still at 60 uh, nautical miles, uh, you will perform another burn, uh, which is either a circularization burn that will enter the CSM and the LM stack into a circular orbit around the moon, or you will perform the descent orbit injection burn directly, uh, which will uh, insert the lunar module into an orbit ready for landing. But the intent of this tutorial is to cover the basics of doing the lunar orbit injection burn itself. So, if I now return to the CSM, there's a couple of things that we will need to do first. Uh, we will use the burn planner to uh, plan a burn, which will be the LOI burn. The LOI burn is done uh, by the SPS engine. So this is basically just a normal SPS burn. So the LOI burn will happen at PE, which is the closest point to the moon. So the phase will be zero. Phase zero is always PE. Uh, the delta V uh, is going to be around 3000 feet per second, 3150, and it's going to be a retrograde burn. Uh, the reason uh, why I've chosen this number is that by looking at the predicted uh, burn data here, uh, we will see that it will, if we perform this burn, retrograde at phase zero with 3150 in delta V, then uh, we will enter an orbit with 60 nautical miles of altitude, which is basically PE. This one will not be affected. This is what our current PE is uh, right now, and this is where we will perform the burn. But then AP will then be reduced to 170 nautical miles of altitude. So this is a pretty good orbit. If I now, for example, set this one to 3000, you'll see that uh, the data changes. So this one, uh, this way you can kind of uh, brute force your way into figure out, figuring out what delta V you want to uh, go for based on the results. Uh, another way is to of course do this in a live session with a real uh, player mission controller. 
who uh, will do these calculations for you down on ground and then uplink it to or to you either through the AGC or uh, by uploading or providing you with the pads. Anyway, so once we have our data, uh, we can hit request um, and mission control will then let me know that uh, we have a burn scheduled for 69 hours of mission elapsed time, uh, 14 minutes and 22 seconds, with a delta V of 3150 feet per second retrograde. Uh, the next thing that we will need to do is to uh, set this craft up for the burn. So uh, this is typically done by using program 30 on the AGC. So the general procedure for doing a LOI is to do the burn planning as we did now, and then we'll, we will be using P30 to set up for the burn. And then we're going to uh, quickly run through uh, program 52 to align our platform with the burn direction that we're planning. And then we'll use P40 to actually execute the burn itself. So let's get started. Uh, program 30 is uh, the external Delta V program. And by external, it means that uh, we have received the data from somewhere else and we can insert it into the computer. For example, the burn planner or a mission controller will be able to provide you with this external data. Uh, so P30 is all about setting everything up for the burn parameters. Uh, so on the AGC, I'm going to run verb 37, enter 30 uh, to get started. So the first thing that we'll see is the time of ignition. This is the uh, ground elapse time of ignition, which is TIG. Uh, the first register is hour, and then we have minutes on R2, and then seconds on uh, R3. And if we take a look at this, this resembles the exact uh, same numbers that mission control communicated to us, but you can of course use verb 21, 22, 23 or even 25 to modify these if you want to. Okay, uh, we're gonna hit proceed. If we take a look at uh, the program, proceed. Uh, the next thing is our delta V and this is in local vertical coordinates. So basically at the time of ignition uh, in the local vertical coordinates, this is the direction of the burn. And if we take a look at this now, you can see that mostly uh, the burn uh, is on the z-axis, uh, which is basically on our forward axis. Uh, it's minus because we're going to do a retrograde burn, but we're also having a little bit of um, uh, a burn direction that's slightly tilted relative to our local vertical. This basically means that this burn isn't going to be 100% retrograde because uh, the burn itself will take about five to six minutes. So we will need to start the burn uh, early uh, relative to PE. So we're gonna start the burn a little bit before PE. And then at PE, we should be at zero, zero, zero uh, in attitude uh, if we're thinking about the local vertical. So basically, this means that we're going to have a slight tilt to our spacecraft once the burn starts, and then we'll perform the burn for about five to six minutes, and then we're going to end up with another angle. So we'll we'll take a look at how that looks uh, later once we're uh, ready for the burn. Uh, then we can just hit Pro if we don't want to change this. Of course, you can, and it will uh, then uh, give us a prediction of. Uh, our new orbit based on this data and I'm going to hit proceed and it's going to spend a little bit of time calculating this and we'll uh, now seeing that there uh, we have a prediction of our entry and then we have uh, the time left until the burn which is 15 minutes so right now I'm just going to time scale up to about 10 minutes left uh, to get ready for the other things that we need to set up in the craft. So I'm going to hit proceed now uh, to end the program. And I'm going to verify that my uh, ordeal is set to inertial. And uh, this can be off. It doesn't really matter as long as I'm on inertial. So the ordeal is fine. Uh, it's very important that you don't run program 52 if your FDI is set to orbital rate. Uh, this will kind of just make everything redundant. 
Uh, so keep this in inertial because it's the inertial platform that we want to use. So um, now that we're ready for our um, burn, we need to get into the proper attitude. So I'm going to hit uh, verb 37, enter 52. This is basically program 52, and this will allow us to do a couple of things. Um, it's a very complicated set of instructions for uh, program 52, uh, but it does a lot of things. So if I now open up program 52 under uh, guidance and navigation alignments, you can see that uh, program 52, this is quick tutorial, uh, and then um, this one is the checklist itself. And you can see that it's quite lengthy. But the thing with program 52 is that it has a lot of different options. Uh, it has four options, in fact. So if we now scroll down, uh, we have the options, uh, which is one. Uh, this is the preferred direction. If you align the I'm use with the burn direction that we planned in uh, program 30. Uh, option two is nominal. This will align us with the local vertical at a specific uh, uh, time. Uh, the next one is to realign the gyros uh, on um, uh, uh, to uh, remove kind of the accumulated IMU gyro errors. Basically, uh, the more you, you use the IMU and the FDI, uh, the more errors will be accum accumulated over time because this isn't 100% perfect. Uh, so option three can then be used to remove this gyro drift uh, that happens over time. This is important to do a couple of times uh, uh, during coasting and before critical burns. And then lastly, option four is the landing site. This will align it to a uh, location on the planet, such as for example, when you're doing a uh, lunar landing, uh, the lunar module will align its IMUs with the landing site. If you're interested in learning more about RefsMath and Program 52 itself, I have a dedicated tutorial on how that works. Uh, the only thing that we're interested in, in right now is to run pro uh, option one. So the first thing we did was to uh, run verb 3752 to enter the program. And then we're going to do option one, uh, which means that we're going to run verb 22, enter. And I'm going to set this to option one, enter, and proceed. And if we now have selected option one, we need to go to step five. So now I'm going to scroll all the way down to step five. This basically shows me uh, the angles with that we will uh, change the attitude with. Uh, I'm going to hit pro. Let me move this a little bit. I'm going to hit pro. And take a look at the FDI now, it will snap into a new location. Uh, once this is done, we're be, uh, we have uh, exited program 52. So that's all there is to that, it's quite simple. Uh, usually you can do this before every SPS burn that you want to do. This means that our IMU is now aligned with the burn direction, which is uh, a retrograde burn if we now align our spacecraft with 0, 0, 0 on the, this F die, it means that we're now on the looking into the burn direction that we wanted to do. So if I now go and check, uh, um, I think it's this. you can see that uh, this will point us in a retrograde burn. This happened during the, the SPS burn planner. So this is something that we will need to change. Uh, but we're gonna just do that in uh, uh, program 30, 40, I mean. So the next and last step before uh, ignition is to do the uh, program 40, which will set us up for the burn, uh, get into the correct attitude, arm the SPS and uh, execute the burn itself. So now I'm going to run verb 37, enter, and 40, enter. First, we will need to uh, set our attitude. And uh, 
because our IMU is perfectly aligned with the burn direction, we will need to set this all to zero. So I'm going to start by doing verb 22 and set this to zero degrees and then verb 23 and set this to zero degrees. Okay. And then I'm going to hit uh, proceed and proceed with the automatic river. Uh, now we're going to um, slowly move towards uh, the burn direction. Uh, what I'm going to do now is to help it a little bit. Um, if I set this to auto, it will start to maneuver. But since I've direct enabled as well, I will be able to kind of help the uh, autopilot a little bit. This will, of course, spend more fuel on the RCS. So if you have the time, uh, feel free to just wait by setting this to auto. You can see that the auto maneuver is now starting. But now if I perform some attitude corrections, you will see that it's now uh, going a little bit faster. So I'm going to just do this for the sake of this tutorial and for the sake of time. And we want to head to uh, zero, 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 basically. There we go. I'm going to start slowing down. There we go. And then this is fine. Okay. Now let's arm the SPS. It's uh, quite simple. Uh, you just set the Delta V thrust to normal. I'm going to arm both of them, A and B, uh, to make sure that nothing will prevent our engine from uh, igniting. And you can, of course, operate the engine itself here. You can see the uh, fuel levels and, and things like that. And everything is in balance, so we should be good to go. All right, I'm going to hit Pro. We can see that we're now two minutes away from the burn. And uh, I'm going to time scale a little bit until about one minute. Here we go. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is to just move the sun a little bit so you can see what's going on. Uh, I think maybe even 180. There we go. So now you can see that we're, our, we're in a retrograde uh, direction. There we go. Uh, we're on a retrograde direction. You can see uh, how the moon moves relative to you. It's going uh, in line straight up relative to us. But as you can see, we have a slight angle relative to our um, gravity vector, which is basic, basically pointing towards the center of the moon. Uh, this angle is because we are going to start to burn uh, a little bit early uh, and then uh, we're going to end up uh, with an angle in the opposite direction. Uh, since we aligned our IMUs and we're on an in in inertial, uh, then this means that we will now stay in uh, this fixed attitude for the entire duration of the burn. And I'm going to hit Pro to start the ignition. Um, I was talking a little bit too much, so it was a little bit late burn, but that's fine. If I now go to map moon, uh, you can see that our parameters are uh, kind of uh, stable when it comes to PE. You see that it's uh, staying at 60 nautical miles of altitude. Uh, this is because our attitude is quite centered on the uh, FDI. But this one will ping pong a little bit, especially with these step settings that I'm currently having. But pay attention to this value. If this suddenly starts to explode somewhere, you're in a wrong attitude relative to uh, the, the plant burn. And then secondly, AP should be increasing or decreasing quite a lot. It's on the negative side, which means that we're still on... Uh, let me zoom out a little bit. An escape 
trajectory uh, relative to the moon. But once that we've received, uh, reduced enough speed, this one will then slowly, gradually shrink, 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 and then end up in a very large elliptical orbit, and then continue to shrink into our targets. And our target was around 170 nautical miles, which is around 2050 kilometers or something like that. So let's pay attention to this value. You can also see that the DAP is now working uh, to get us back into the dead eye of the F dot. Uh, this one should be 000, zero, zero as, as much as possible. Uh, once this drifts down or up, you can see that this will increase or decrease uh, relative to, to where we are. You can see that it's now very stable and then it will uh, shift direction and it's going to just do that uh, up and down all the way, so uh, we're fine. Uh, the thing here is that it doesn't need to be 100% uh, precise when it comes to this first burn, because we can always correct things when we're doing this, the circulation burn or the doy burn. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you're a kilometer off here and there. This burn will of course now last for about five to six minutes, depending on the delta V. Uh, we're also having the lunar module attached to us, as you can see. Uh, this will add extra weight, so the, the burn is uh, a bit longer uh, in a lunar landing profile versus uh, the Apollo 8 profile, for example, where only the CSM made it to the moon without the LEM. You can also pay attention to uh, the data here, this is the time um, uh, that we've been burning. So we've been burning for 3 minutes and 20 seconds now. And this is the delta V left. Uh, this one might be a little bit off uh, based on how you're performing the burn itself. Uh, so to sum up, uh, what we've done now is to uh, uh, to first use the SPS burn planner to plan a retrograde burn at PE, which is basically phase zero, uh, with a delta V of 3150. This will of course uh, be different based on what parameters you chose for the TLI burn, what, you, what your insertion altitude for a moon is and, and stuff like that. But of course you can just play around with the tool to get uh, into an orbit that you like. Uh, then we used uh, program 30 to set up for the burn. Uh, then we used program 52 to align uh, our IMU or the attitude the inertial attitude of the spacecraft with the planned burn direction that we did in program 30. Uh, and then uh, once that was done, uh, we used P40 to uh, execute the burn itself. Uh, we set, set the attitude to 0, 0, 0 because this is going to be the relative burn angle uh, based on our IMU. We wanted to basically look into the center of the burn direction. And this is what it's now trying to maintain during this entire burn. Uh, and then we uh, hit Pro uh, when Verb 99 was showing. I did it a little bit late and it will affect the results of my burn a little bit, but uh, not too much. Uh, then we're now looking at the countdown. Uh, we're at 5 minutes now. Um, it's going to be increasing still. Uh, the other thing that I like to do is to be ready to hit Pro. So. Once uh, I see that there is something strange going on uh, with these values, uh, PE uh, suddenly starts to increase a lot, or we're now getting into, uh, for example, an altitude that's below the surface of the moon, which will make us you know, collide with the surface of the moon, uh, it's important to react quickly. And uh, you can hit Pro here to basically tell the AGC that you're now done with the burn. And, uh, uh, you abort it basically. We're coming on up. We're coming up on the three thousand mark of AP. This is uh, kilometers from uh, or the radius basically in kilometers. 
and our target is around 2050 or something like that. Uh, you can see that PE is still very stable, but I'm pretty sure that it's going to increase a, a little bit towards the end of the burn uh, because of our, of our late ignition. So I'm going to be ready to just pro here. You can see the light here that we're now doing an SPS burn. All right, and insertion. If I now hit Pro, you can see that we now entered an orbit of uh, one hundred and sixty-nine point three nautical miles and that we maintain 57.8 nautical miles of altitudes of PE. So this is PE and this is AP. And uh, I would say this was uh, a pretty okay burn. Uh, we still had uh, some delta V left based on our uh, inserted values, uh, but I've uh, added some logic that kind of helps you a little bit when it comes to this. I'm gonna hit pro and uh, we're done with the low burn basically. So if I now go to the orbit view, you can see that we're now in a pretty nice orbit around the moon uh, with PE at 60 nautical miles of altitude and then AP which is here and then AP at 170 nautical miles of altitude. So if you now want to circleize this orbit or if you want to go directly into uh, the doi burn, you will just basically perform a full revolution of uh, <clears throat> the moon. And once you reach PE again, you plan a new burn for phase zero. You should plan it, of course, a little bit early. And then get into the target orbit and then shape uh, shape it as you like. Uh, once you're into circle orbit, it's uh, quite easy to select a landing site because when you're in a circular orbit, uh, it doesn't really matter if you burn at AP or PE or wherever because everyone is at the same altitude. So for example, let's say that this is a circular orbit and you do a retrograde burn here, then your landing point will be on this side. Um, so what I typically do then is that I get into the CSM and uh, I perform an orbit, I look down and if I see a landing point that I like in this current orbit, Let's say that the landing point would be, of course, I've now moved the sun a little bit. So let's move this back. Let's be uh, 200. Maybe even less. Let's say that we wanted to land here. I would then go in and check what my current phase is and then plan a burn at this phase number plus 180. Which, will me which means that the burn will then happen 180 degrees away uh, from the planned landing site, which will then mean that PE will then be reduced towards that landing point. And then once you're into a, a landing orbit, then you can release the lunar module and perform the landing itself. Uh, I'm going to follow up with another tutorial uh, on doing the descent orbit injection burn, which is basically getting from this orbit into an orbit that's usable for landing the lunar module and also going through those things that I just covered, uh, shaping the orbit to be able to select the landing point that you will. But with that, uh, thank you for uh, paying attention and I hope that this helped you. If you have questions, please please reach out. And if you like this video, uh, please like and subscribe. So thanks everyone.